what we need is help. Help, powerful, efficient, constant. We need a very present help in trouble. What a mercy that we have it in our God. Our hope is in Jehovah, for our help comes from him. Help is on the road and will not fail to reach us in due time. For he who sent it to us was never known to be too late. Jehovah who created all things is equal to every emergency. Heaven and earth are at the disposal of him who made them. Therefore, let us be very joyful in our infinite helper. He will sooner destroy heaven and earth than permit his people to be destroyed. And the perpetual hills themselves shall bow rather than he shall fail whose ways are everlasting. We are bound to look beyond heaven and earth to him who made them both. It is vain to trust the creatures. It is wise to trust the creator. This is a quote coming to you from the treasury of David. Now in this broadcast, we are continuing our new series based on the theme, Nearer My God to Thee. In this podcast, we will use as our main text the following scriptures. Psalm 121 verse 2 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Psalm 124 8 says, Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Psalm 146 5 through 6 says, Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is. Now in these four verses of scripture, we find the words, help, Lord, made heaven and earth. These are repeated. In Psalm 121, verse 2, this is referring to David. We find the words, my help. That word help in the Hebrew is azer, which means aid, my help, my aid. In Psalm 124, 8, this is referring to Israel. It mentions the words, our help. And that same word in the Hebrew is azer for help. And then in Psalm 146, verse 5, it's referring to the one whose hope is in the Lord his God, his help. Once again, there's the Hebrew word azer, meaning aid, my help, my aid, his help. So we have the words, my help, our help, his help. And we have to ask, help from what? Well, implied in these passages of scripture, that word help or aid is sought in uh, different times, times of trouble, when encompassed with danger, in trials, while facing great difficulties and oppositions, when in a state of distress, or in the time of battle, while traveling on a journey facing danger, trouble, and uncertainties. Now we find uh, these insinuations of what kind of trouble they're facing in words like uh, in Psalm 121, uh, David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Well, he's referring to the fact that he's in some kind of danger, straits, troubles, where Help is not to be found where he's at. He needs to go higher to find help. And then in the other psalm, it says that men are rising up against me. So we find these references to a time of trouble, a time of difficulty, a time of straits and distress. 
Now, we all know that the common cry for mankind can be summed up in one word, and that word is help. Help. The question is, who are you crying out to in your trouble? Who are you looking to for help? Who is your present help in trouble? The Family Bible Note said, looking to God for help is a mark which distinguishes the true believer from all other men. Now, let me say that again. Looking to God for help is a mark which distinguishes the true believer from all other men. Are you a true believer? Are you looking to God for help rather than looking to the creature? Adam Clark said, There's no help for me but in my God, and I expect it from no other quarter. Then the pulpit commentary said, What God can do, be to us the help which he has always been to his people. Do for us what he has always done for his people. What has he done in our lives? That he can still do. What has he done in the lives of others? That he can do in our lives if need be. What has he done in the vicissitudes of the ages? That he can do for our age and for us. Then John Gill said, In all kind of trouble that the saints come into, the Lord has been found by experience to be an exceeding great helper of them. Moreover, he is easily and always to be come at and found by them for their help. And then the family Bible note said, Those who have God for their defender need fear no evil. So we see in Psalm 121 verse 2 that David said, my help cometh from the Lord. In Psalm 124, 8, Israel spoke these words of triumphing and victorious faith when they said, Our help is in the name of the Lord. And then in Psalm 146, 5, David said of those whose hope is in the Lord his God, Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. Okay, so looking at these verses individually, we look at, first of all, Psalm 121, verse 2. David said, My help is literally from the Lord, from God alone. He is his people's help. He is the one that helps his people out of the hands of all their enemies and out of all their troubles and afflictions. He helps them in the performance of their duty, in the exercise of grace, in uh, fighting the Lord's battles, and in obtaining all blessings, whether they be temporal or spiritual. His help is quick, present, suitable, seasonable, and sufficient. Then in Psalm 124, verse 8, Israel said, Our help is in the name of the Lord, meaning that their hope for the future, their ground of confidence in all troubles, both present and future, is in the Lord, the great Yahweh, only in Him, not in any creature. In the past, Israel's help and extremity came from Jehovah, so she can readily place implicit confidence for the future in him. And the church can say the same today. In the past, her help in extremity came from God, from Jesus, so she can readily place implicit confidence for the future in him. What he did in the past, he will do in the days to come. 
Now, more specifically, Israel's help is in the name of the Lord, meaning in Jehovah's revealed character. You see, in Scripture, uh, it was usual to find a person's attributes or character expressed by a name. So Israel declared, our help is and has always been in the name of the Lord, meaning in the manifested might of the Lord. This was their foundation of confidence, their sure fountain of strength. Then we look at Psalm 146, verse 5. David offers an example of a specific name to call upon in our time of trouble by saying, Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. The name of the Lord, the God of Jacob for his help. Those whose hope is in the Lord is God may rely for protection on the God who defended Jacob in his travels and dangers. He is the God of Jacob, or we could say it this way, he is the God of the tried believer. He is the God of Jacob or the God of the tried believer. He is the only living and true God. He helps all his people out of their sad estate of sin and misery, just like he helped Jacob. He helps them under their infirmities, temptations, and afflictions, just as he helped Jacob. He helps them against every enemy of their souls, just like he did for Jacob. And he helps them in all their way to heaven, just like he did for Jacob. So we saw how each verse emphasized the words help, Lord, or name of the Lord, and more specifically, the God of Jacob. But most importantly, each verse emphasizes the clause which made heaven and earth. And this is what we're going to emphasize in this teaching today. That clause is so important. It's important that you get this, which made heaven and earth. In Psalm 121, verse 2, David said, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. In Psalm 124, 8, Israel said, Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. In Psalm 146, 5 through 6, David was talking about, about the ones whose hope is in the Lord his God. He said, Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is. So we see this clause repeated, which made heaven and earth, who made heaven and earth, which made heaven and earth. And what's being emphasized here is that God is the great creator of the universe. Therefore, he is able to protect you. And we find this uh, in the words uh, in the psalm, preserve you from all evil, preserve your soul. Because he's your, the great creator, he's able to protect you and also provide for you. He is an omnipotent help, the very opposite of man in whom is no help. Psalm 146 verse 3 says, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom is no help. And yet that's who we run to when we're in time of need. We run to man for help. Yet the Bible tells us clearly, uh, don't put your trust in the Son of Man, nor even in leaders in whom is no help. The maker of the world has all power in himself. He is to be trusted because he is the omnipotent creator. 
And it's as though the psalmist had this thinking. As long as I see heaven and earth, the two great standing monuments of his power before me, I will never distrust, never be discouraged. I hope in that God which made all these things out of nothing. And it would be good for you and me to take on this thinking that as long as you see heaven and earth, these are the two great standing monuments of God's power that are before you, that you will never distrust, you'll never be discouraged, you will hope in that God which made all these things out of nothing. Now remember that when you trust God, you trust an almighty creator who is able to help. No matter how desperate the case may be, he is able to help. He can create when he has nothing to work with. He can do more for you than you are able to ask or think of. That is why the psalmist set the eternal God, the maker of heaven and earth, against all his troubles, against all opposition of the enemy, and against all danger, knowing that the maker of heaven and earth is able to swallow up all the raging furies of the world and even of hell itself. He is able to drown the wickedness of the whole world and of hell. Matthew Henry said this, We must encourage our confidence in God with this, that he made heaven and earth, and he who did that can do anything. He made the world out of nothing, himself alone, by a word speaking in a little time, and all very good, very excellent and beautiful. And therefore, how great soever our straits and difficulties are, he has power sufficient for our succor and relief. He that made heaven and earth is sovereign Lord of all the hosts of both, and can make use of them as he pleases for the help of his people, and restrain them when he pleases from hurting his people. The preacher's homiletic commentary went on to say, The creator of all can succor and defend all. The great forces of both worlds are under his control. He restrains their malignant and multiplies their beneficent ministries. However complicated our straits and pungent our grief, his power is all-sufficient. With such a refuge, despair would be madness. Now, in closing, in 1 Peter 4.19, the Apostle Peter exhorted us with these words. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Since there's so much danger and trouble surrounding you, this is what Peter was saying to the saints back then, and he's saying to us today, since there's so much danger and trouble surrounding you, commit the keeping of your whole self to the faithful creator. Now notice he used those words to the faithful creator. He could have said to the faithful redeemer, the faithful savior, the faithful Lord. But he used those words for a reason. Commit the keeping of your whole self to the faithful creator. Place your life confidently in his hands. Commit all your interests to him. Leave everything in his hand. Deliver yourself and your life to his safekeeping. He is faithful. That means that he always keeps his promises. 
He's able to keep what you commit to him. He's faithful, but he's also the creator. And as creator, you can come to him and look to him for his protection and care. He's able and willing to sustain you, comfort you, and bless you under all your trials. He faithfully keeps and defends what is under his protection and power. The preacher's homiletic commentary said this, The more we widen our views of God, the more confidence we shall have in him in trouble. So in this message, we want to widen our views of God so that we could have more confidence uh, uh, in him in our time of trouble. So today in this message, we say, consider God as your creator and learn to say daily as Israel declared, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Learn to say that. Our help, my help, is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then refuse to live like the heathen in worry, tension, fear, and stress. Set the eternal God, the maker of heaven and earth, against all your troubles, against all your dangers, against all the oppositions of the enemy. And remember, when you trust the Almighty Creator, your God, know that He is able to help, no matter how desperate the case may be. He is the maker of heaven and earth. Our time is up for today's broadcast but I encourage you, stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, Nearer, My God to Thee. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will walk in the truth every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen.